Welcome to the entire MCU ranked in under 10 minutes. See, I would do a big long intro, but I don't have the time. Let's go! 38. I am Groot. It's a series of short, what more do you want from me? Number 37. The Incredible Hulk. This doesn't really feel like the MCU anymore, does it? Number 36. What if? What if we actually came up with more interesting what if scenarios? 35. Black Widow. Just a bit unnecessary, not gonna lie. 34. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Just such a clear and noticeable step down from the first one that I don't find it enjoyable. 33. Thor The Dark World. Is it overhated? Yes. Is it very good? No. 32. Captain Marvel. Does Brie Larson deserve all her hate? No. Would I choose to watch it? Probably not. Number 31. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. A film titled Multiverse of Madness that isn't very mad or very multiverse heavy. Number 30, She-Hulk. I know we're not all the way through it, but bear with me. If this was off the first few episodes, this would get a bit higher for me. But then the last few episodes just haven't been good enough, so I've got to put it here. 29, Spider-Man Far From Home. A sequel for me that just feels too silly and therefore you just lose a lot of the enjoyment. But Mysterio is great. Mysterio is great. 28, Iron Man 3. It does kind of feel different from the rest of the MCU a little bit, and obviously the ending is just kind of completely ignored going forward, but I do just really enjoy this as a very Tony Stark focused story, which we never really got again after this. 27, Iron Man 2. Underrated! I think it's an interesting continuation of Tony's arc. Not quite as good as the first one, but still worth a watch. Number 26, Ant-Man. Definition of just a good fun MCU film, nothing really more, nothing really less. Number 25, Moon Knight. I mean, it was pretty good, but I know it didn't hit me in the way that I think some people think it's their favourite, and it's not mine. 24, Thor, Love and Thunder. A lot of people don't seem to like it. While I can acknowledge it has a lot of flaws, I still find it as a lot of fun with a lot of the characters we know and love. 23, Shang-Chi. A little bit overrated, but still very good. Number 22, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Feels like it could have been four or five episodes instead of six at places, but still a very good, dark, gritty story that sets up the future of the MCU very well. Number 21, Avengers Age of Ultron. The worst Avengers film by far, but I think all these characters together just has some form of magic to it. Now we're entering in the top 20. These are, these are some really good ones. Number 20, Miss Marvel. If some of you didn't keep up with this show, you should have done. Takes a bit of a lull in like the middle end bit, but the first few episodes and the last few episodes are fantastic. Number 19, Thor. Such an underrated gem. People forget that this one is actually very funny as well. It also embraces a really Shakespearean side of Thor, which I find really interesting, especially to see how he's, he's then journeyed away from that. But I still really like this very original version of the character. Number 18, Iron Man. The movie that started it all! Yeah, it's class. Number 17, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Don't at me, this is fantastic. Honestly, one of the funniest films in the MCU. I can happily whack it on any time. Number 16, Loki. Tom Hiddleston gets six hours of screen time. Therefore, 16th. 15, Doctor Strange. A mix of a fantastic origin story with great characters and really new creative action for the time in the MCU. Yeah, this one's fantastic. Number 14, Captain America, the first Avenger. Don't, don't be sleeping on this absolute gem. For an origin story, this is pretty perfect. Number 13, WandaVision. A Disney Plus series that kind of uses the formula of being a TV show the best. By being a TV show. It works. Number 12. Hawkeye. My favourite Disney Plus show. It's got great characters, great action, the Christmas theme's fantastic. Hawkeye is great. Why did everyone sleep on Hawkeye? Number 11, The Eternals. I'm going to have no rubbish on this video. Eternals is thought-provoking with some fantastic performances and characters, and I think it's one of my favourites. Wait, we're in the top 10. These must be good then. Number 10, Black Panther. A big cinematic milestone that lived up to the hype and was fantastic from start to finish. A apart from a slightly wonky third act. Nine, Spider-Man Homecoming. This is a fantastically fresh Spider-Man story. 
No origin story, just a properly relatable Peter Parker and an actor that feels fantastic as both the Spider-Man and the Peter Parker. Did I just say Peter Parker twice? Peter Parker, Peter Parker, Peter Parker, Peter Piper, Peter Parker, Peter Pecker, Pipple Peppers. Can even say the tongue twister right. Number eight, Guardians of the Galaxy. It's just a lot of fun, in it. Oh wait, I'm supposed to be analytical. Um, the family dynamic of the Guardians. Woo! Number seven, the Avengers. So it's it, it's a piece of cinematic history for the MCU and just general. This this was the proof of concept, and it definitely proved the concept. Number six, Spider-Man: No Way Home. Incredibly, incredibly messy film, but the best fan service in a film ever. No Way Home missed out on top five. These next five must be class then. Number five, Thor Ragnarok. Some have genuinely used Love and Thunder to discredit Taika Waititi. If, if Taika Waititi isn't involved in Thor 5, don't make it, because he revitalised the Thor character with this film. It's fantastic. Number four, Avengers Endgame. Honestly, for me, the last half hour, hour of this film is the best MCU of all time. Another perfect example of fan service done completely right. Number three, Captain America Civil War. I mean, you've got class action, class characters. It's just incredible. You've got emotional moments. It's, it, it, it's class. It's class. This, this, this top three is tough. This top three is tough. At number two, Avengers Infinity War. If the original Avengers was good, this, oh, it's the perfect Avengers film. Great plot lines, all the characters coming together, all those moments you really want from Avengers film. This film is nearly perfect. And number one, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. The best Cap film, the best MCU film, for me, the best superhero film. A superhero film, it's a spy film, it's this character drama, it's got the best action of the MCU, hand to hand or anything else. It's a 10 out of 10 film and I won't hear otherwise. <sighs> I made it. Under 10 minutes. I gave you that banging piece of content, so you have to subscribe. And here's me reviewing Thor Love and Thunder with a mate for the first time. Yeah, you could, if you want more thoughts, have that one. See you later.